Welcome. This video is over the first part of Chapter 7, Section 3, where I talk about formulas for ionic compounds. How do you determine the formula and how do we write them? So what you need to know is there's two kinds of chemical formulas. There's molecular formulas like H2O that represent molecules, hence the name molecular formula. But those are um, compounds that have covalent bonds, which we haven't studied yet. Ionic compounds don't form true individual molecules. They form these lattices, and I've got the pictures on the bottom here, again, showing you the lattice of the alternating positive and negative ions. And so instead, we use what's called a formula unit. So it shows the ratio, the simplest ratio of the different elements you need so that the octet rule is obeyed for both the positive and the negative ion. Okay, so when determining formula units for ionic compounds, it's important to remember that the total charge for an ionic compound has to equal zero because the electrons gained by one element has to equal the electrons lost by another. One, one element is smaller and pulling the electrons off. The other one is larger and giving those electrons up. And since the ion forms a crystal lattice, the formula unit then is going to be the smallest ratio of the cation to the anion. We always list it in that order, cation, then anion. Typically, formulas, you'll notice, uh, list the elements in the order they show up from the left side of the table to the right. So the cation is always given first, the anion is listed second. So to determine the formula unit, you need to know each atom's oxidation number, which remembers just how many electrons it's likely going to gain or lose to get to the magic number of eight, and then determine the number of ions of each atom you need so that the electrons lost is equal to the electrons gained. And again, the oxidation number is the number of electrons an atom needs to gain or lose to have eight electrons in its outer shell. Unless it's element one through five, then two is enough. Two will do. So you can easily determine an, atom's, an element's oxidation number by what family it is on the periodic table, because remember, families tell you how many valence electrons they have. So when we look at this, periods 1, 2, 3, or I'm sorry, families 1a, 2a, 3a, and 4a all have 1, 2, 3, and 4 valence electrons, so they're likely to lose those electrons and pick up a positive charge. Now with period four, we actually put plus four or minus four because it takes about equal energy to gain or lose those electrons. The metals tin and lead tend to lose the four. Carbon and silicon tend to gain four instead. Um, the oxidation numbers in the middle, they're at plus two or because they're filling up their d orbital, which isn't in the outer energy level, they can actually gain as few as one or as many as five. So we often use Roman numerals in parentheses after the name of the element, like copper two or copper one, to let you know if it's gained one or two. So transition metals, you'll be told. The other ones, for the A groups, it's going to match the number of the A group. Now once you get to group five, six, seven, and eight, now you're to the smaller nonmetals, which are going to tend to gain. So I'm going to work through this try it and show you a couple of ways I like to determine the oxidation or determine the ionic formula, the formula unit. So my first example says sodium combines with chlorine. So I've written down Na for sodium and I've put a plus sign by it because sodium's in group 1A and will tend to lose that one electron. Chlorine is Cl and now when I look I see chlorine's in family 7 so it's going to tend to gain that one electron. So if I think about it, one sodium atom, one chlorine atom, we've got an exchange or transfer of one electron. So this ratio is going to be just one to one, or I could expect the formula unit to be NaCl. If we look at sodium combining with oxygen, however, now when I uh, look at my oxidation numbers, sodium is still giving up its one electron per atom. But oxygen actually needs two electrons per atom. So one to one won't work. I'm going to have to have a second sodium atom in order for this to balance, in order for the transfer to be equal. So this would be written Na2O, or it's a two to one ratio. So see if you can figure out how magnesium and oxygen combine and aluminum and oxygen. So you could pause here and try this on your own. 
Using my method, I would write down magnesium and I'd put two plus signs to show it's got an oxida oxidation number of plus two. Oxygen, on the other hand, needs two electrons. So I can see that one magnesium and one oxygen works out perfect. Aluminum, this one gets a little messy because aluminum has three to give. Oxygen still only takes two. So I've got an extra, <clears throat> excuse me, an extra electron. So I'm going to have to have a second oxygen to take that electron. But now I have oxygen short an electron. So I'm going to have to add another aluminum. And just when the whole thing looks hopeless, I could bring in a third oxygen. And I finally have an equal number of electrons being lost, six electrons from two aluminum atoms. And those six electrons are being gained by three oxygens. So I would write this Al2O3.